Station number six, the reckoning, hisab. All the people are waiting for accountability, for questioning. That is the station. May Allah make it easy for us. May Allah make us among those who will receive their books with their right hands. Amen. Station number seven, receiving the books. Some people with their right hands, some with their left hands. Those who receive their books with right hands, they rejoice. Come, come, read my book. Happy. Because I was certain that I'm going to meet my Lord. The other, يا ليتها كانت القاضية The kuffar, they will receive their books with their left hands and they will look. ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجد ما عملوا حاضرة ولا يظلم ربك An amazing book. Everything is jotted with the time stamp at this particular moment of time in this place you did this and that and that and that things you have forgotten about them everything is recorded the books that's the station number seven then from there what is next now the mizan the balance the scale where the deeds will be weighed the deeds will be weighed physically things will be materialized if the hasanat the good deeds they outweigh the evil ones you go to the jannah The evil deeds, the sayyiyat, the misdeeds outweigh hasanat, you go to hell. If they are equal, 50-50, where? Al-A'raf. Al-A'raf. Between the Jannah and the hellfire. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows them, allows them to enter the the Jannah. So the scale, real, balance, it has two sides. So that is station number eight. Station number nine is the Hawd, the Kawthar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who will drink from it, from the hands of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. The Kawthar. This beautiful fountain. Its water is whiter than the milk. Purer than, uh, sweeter than the honey. And it is so wide. So vast. Its width. Like the distance between Sana'a. And Amman. Imagine. That's the Kawthar of the Prophet Sallallahu the number of glasses, as many as the number of the stars in the sky. Allahu Akbar. Whoever drinks from that will never become thirsty after. Never. Al Kawthar. Inna a'tainaka al Kawthar. Now, some Muslims will be deprived of drinking from the Kawthar. People, because you see, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, Where can we find you, O Prophet of Allah, on the day of resurrection? Where we should look for you? And will you be able to recognize us? He said, Yes. The places of wudu, all the limbs of wudu, the organs, hands, faces, 
feet are shining. Oh, he's a Muslim. These are signals, signs. All these organs that you wash in the wudu, they will be illuminating, shining. So that's how the Prophet ﷺ will recognize us. And he said, you will find me at the scale, at the balance, at the fountain, at the sirat. So he mentioned where we will find him on that day. So now he's there at the kawthar and he is giving water. Imagine, Allah Akbar. Allah Akbar that the Prophet ﷺ, he is handing over to you the glass. Drink. And some, they will see glasses and they will be drinking. Who is giving them? They don't know. وَسَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ شَرَابًا Some, they try to come to drink from the kawdha. They are Muslims. The angels are after them running, holding them from behind. Come here. Come here. The Prophet ﷺ, he sees the sign. He said, this is my ummah. My followers say, you don't know what they did after you. Woe to them, woe to them, God, take them to hell. Why? Because you did not follow his sunnah. You did not abide by his teachings. You started, created your own deen, your own understanding, inventing matters and adding them to the deen. Because of that, you will be deprived of drinking from the kawthar, the fountain of the Prophet <laughs> So if you want to drink from the kawthar, stick to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Follow his footsteps. Follow his footsteps. As one of the mashayikh said, if you want to enter the Jannah before the Prophet ﷺ, you will never enter the Jannah. If you want to enter the Jannah simultaneously with the Prophet, you will never enter the Jannah. You want to enter the Jannah, what should you do? Walk behind behind him sallallahu alaihi wasallam then after that after you quench your thirst from the kawthar the station number 10 the test allah test the believers because allah will tell on that day everyone should follow his deity Whatever you worship, follow it. And people will follow their deities, except the mu'mineen, the Muslims, the believers. And Allah will come to them. What are you waiting? Say, we wait for our deity. And when they find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to them, they prostrate for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Station number after that, being tested, and everyone now is following his deity. You worship the moon, worship the sun. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said that the sun and the moon will be in the hellfire with them. Thawrani mukawwarani fin nar. Why? To make you feel more sad. This is the sun I was worshipping and now it is with me in the hellfire. This is the moon. This is the idol. This is this, this is that. So everyone will follow that particular deity that he used to worship. The Mu'mineen, after that, they go from station number 10 to station number 11. And that is now... By the way, the disbelievers, the kuffar, from station 8, they go to the hellfire. What is the station number 8? The balance. From there, straight to Jahannam. They don't go to the, the kawthar. Finish. Now from that 
phase, that is particular stage, it is known to them. Go. So now the Muslims and the believers from station number 10 to station number 11, and that is the hellfire. What does that mean? Crossing over the hellfire. That is the sirat. That's what? The sirat. Because the sirat is that bridge. The bridge which is over the hell, the hellfire. And the Prophet ﷺ, you know, he described it. He saw, it, was, it is so thin, as thin as the strand of hair. And it is so slippery. And it is so dark. And it is on top of the hellfire. And people, they have to cross. And may Allah make it easy for all of us to cross. And some people, they cross it just like the flash of light. May Allah make us among them. Ameen. Some like fast horses. Some like one who is walking. Some are crawling. Different speeds. Some they fall into it. The hellfire. So now, that is the station number 11. Those who manage to cross the hellfire, Alhamdulillah, now Jahannam is behind. And inshallah we will leave it behind by the grace of Allah. Amen. What will happen after that? Will we go straight to the Jannah? No. There is another obstacle in the way. And here, actually, this is what is called the minor bridge or Qantara. It is there because now, Alhamdulillah, now everyone knows he's going to the Jannah. Okay? But at that, until that, at that stay, at that particular moment, we still have all these uh, things that we had in the dunya. Ills, things in the hearts, all these diseases. So Allah removes them. So when we enter the Jannah, like as if all of us have one heart. No hatred, no malice, no jealousy, no envy, nothing. All these feelings we have here, they will not be there. Removed. Allah removes all these things. Even the women in the Jannah, they will not feel jealous. Because hmm? the sisters always, whenever they hear the huriyat, they become jealous, right? They do. No, no. On that day, you will not feel jealous. In the Jannah, no one will feel jealous at all. Allah removes all these things. Everyone will be happy in the Jannah. That is the station number 12, the Qantara. Allah removes all these ills. And station, final station, home, sweet home, the Jannah. May Allah grant us the admission to the Jannah by His mercy. And the Jannah, wa ma adraakam al Jannah. Paradise, my dear brothers and sisters. The Prophet ﷺ, he entered the Jannah. He walked in the Jannah. He saw the Jannah. He saw the, pa the palaces in the Jannah. One brick is gold, another one is silver. The soil is musk. The rivers are flowing through the, your mansions, your palaces. Wine, milk, honey, whatever you want. Clusters of grapes. See the cluster. You want grape? The cluster comes down to you. You eat. It goes back. Hmm? You eat, your stomach is full. No burping or belching or, and onion and garlic and huh? nothing like that. You are full. What happens? You start to sweat. That's how the waste comes, sweating. But sweat 
mask. That is the real life. And your family with you. Allahu Akbar. And there is something better than that. What is it? What is the most enjoyable and pleasurable thing in the Jannah? What is it? Seeing Allah. Allahu Akbar. Seeing Allah and talking to Allah. Wujuhun yawma'idhin nadira ila rabbiha. Nadira. Faces are shining, beautiful, bright. And they're looking at the face of Allah. And my dear brothers and sisters, there is a day in the Jannah for seeing Allah and visiting Allah. لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا Whatever they wish, whatever they want, will be giving to them in the Jannah. وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ What is the Mazid? More. What is the more? Seeing the face of Allah. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu he told the tabi'i they were talking and then they are departing leaving one another Abu Huraira said inshallah we will meet fi suq al jannah in the market of jannah so the tabi'i said what there is market in the jannah he said yes there is suq in the jannah In this day of seeing Allah, the people, they come from different levels of the Jannah. What's the highest level of the Jannah? For those. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, if you ask Allah, you ask thee for the for those. What does it mean? Anyone has an idea? Just to say, oh Allah, grant me for those. Or it means work hard. And your target is the Firdaus, not, not lower than that. So the power is raised and the target is high. So if you didn't make it to the Firdaus, you're almost near the Firdaus. Are you following? Like a student who is in his final exam, he already put, set the target. I want distinction. That's it. Not less than that. All A's. So if he didn't get all A's, Maybe only one will be B or because he will work hard for achieving that. Are you following? But another one is saying, I just want to pass. Okay? What is the likelihood for his passing and failure? Which is more? The probability. The likelihood is high that he might fail, right? Because he just wants to cross, just to pass. Like many of us say, yes, I want to enter the Jannah. No, the Prophet ﷺ said, don't behave like that. Your ambition should be high. Your target is the Firdaus. So if you are not in the Firdaus, you are next to the Firdaus. Is this clear? Not that we say, oh Allah, I ask you Al-Firdaus Al-A'la. Al-Hasan Al-Basri, he, heard, he saw a man next to him saying, oh Allah, I ask you Al-Firdaus he hit him. <laughs> said, feel shame of yourself. Is this your salah? Salah for someone uh, who will have the firdaus? Does your salah entitle you for firdaus? And you are asking for the firdaus? You want the firdaus? Work for the firdaus? Hardly. Subhanallah. In the Jannah. When the Prophet ﷺ, he described, you know, he entered the Jannah. He walked in the Jannah. He saw the palaces of the Jannah and he saw one palace in the Jannah. He said, whose palace is that? They said, this belongs to one Lifatan min Quraysh, the youth from Quraysh, sharp from Quraysh. He said, I thought that was mine. He said, let me enter. He said, it's not yours. The Malaika said, it's not for you. He said, whose then? They said, this is Umar's. Umar ibn Khattab. The Prophet ﷺ, when he told Sayyidina Umar, he said, what stopped me from entering the palace is your jealousy, O Umar. 
You might feel jealous, and Umar cried. So he saw the palaces in the Jannah, the Prophet ﷺ. And he saw the trees in the Jannah, the hadith in Sahih Muslim. إِنَّ الْجَوَادَ الْمُضَمَّ لَا يَرْكُضُ فِي ظِلِّ الشَّجَرَةِ the fastest horse will be running in the shade of the tree will not finish it for 100 years the trees in the Jannah the trunks of the trees in the Jannah are made of gold and you know what brothers and sisters this, gen this tree in the Jannah you can plant it right now do you want a plant? Uh, how? subhanallah alhamdulillah وَلَا إِلَٰهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ A tree is planted. That's why Ibrahim a.s. on the night of the Mi'raj, he said, وَأَخْبِرْ O Muhammad, وَأَخْبِرْ أُمَّتَكَ Pass this in use to your ummah. أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ قِيْعَانَ There are many places in the Jannah are not cultivated and not planted yet. وَأَنَّ غِرَاسُهَا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهُ they are, my dear brothers and sisters, malaika, angels, Allah created them just to plant trees for you in the Jannah. You start the dhikr, they start planting for you. You stop, they stop. So the Prophet ﷺ, he walked in the Jannah. And he saw the Jannah. And he told us also about the Huriyat. They are just waiting for you, confined in the tents. They have never been touched neither by jinn or human beings. Pure, chaste. And he said, By the one in whose hand is the soul and spirit of Muhammad. That you will be giving 100 huriya. And the hadith is authentic in Sahih al jama And then he said, This huriya will be wearing 70 dress, 70 garment. And you will be able to see her bone marrow. Can you imagine? You want to fantasize? Do so. <laughs> this is the huriya. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, if one huriya appear to the people in the dunya, will tempt them all. MashaAllah, Imams, Mullah, Maulana, all, 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 all. Huriya. If one of them just removes her khimar, just like this, okay, what is between the east and the west will be illumined, illuminated. Do you think this is easy? You want that? Work for it. The one you have at home, sisters, please, huh? <laughs> you worked a lot. For years you were saving money, right? To get married. And it's only one. And the east and the west will not be illumined. <laughs> so if you want the huriyat, work for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds and your deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show his mercy in all of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannat al-Na'im and raise us all in the company of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.